Hello viewers, hello dojos, hello learner. Today I'm going to show you real quick how to add music to your games in Scratch. There are several ways to go about this from the simplest to the more complex. So I'm starting with a brand new Scratch project, but first let's find the music. Um, I'm going to open a new tab and look for royalty free music. Um, please don't steal music. There's plenty of good free stuff available on the internet. It would be a shame to kind of, you know, like get your game cancelled or pulled or whatever because you're you're nicking a tune. So I like Ben Sound, he's a great composer. I've gotten a couple of things of his thing, the sci-fi and the fun theme, but like what it is yet like all sort of scary. Usually it's not really great with the keyword. How about this? Creepy. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let's get in. Okay, let's have creepy. Download, you just pick that's good for you, right? It works for uh, website animations and so on. As long as you don't remix or podcast it. How about um, fun adventure? Adventure. Well, that's a bit. That's a bit. You know. Epic, bright pop, orchestral, epic symphony. Woo! That is scary spies. I mean, it's going to sound a bit ridiculous for like tiny little laptop speakers for your tiny scratch game, but why not? Come on. All right, I've got a couple of tracks. That's all I wanted to do. To do. Um, now, I don't even need the sprite to start adding music, right? If you just want to add music, let's have go to the stage and go to sound. Remove the pop sound and start uploading your sounds. So I'm going to have doing downloads, right? Uh, evolution and Creaky and Funk House and Sci-Fi. And I've selected four and uploaded all in one go, and it worked! Brilliant! All right, so all I need to do, I'm going to call Funk House FH. Funk House sounds like Funk House. Right? Like you can imagine, it's like 1970s in like San Francisco. A couple of like detectives. One of them gets stuck. Yeah, there's a little voice that says bensound.com. Not, they're not all completely free. Evolution is the big epic one. All right, so I'm going to call that EV. It's important, the naming, because it's going to come up later. Creepy, CR, and Sci-Fi, SF. So I've put my, my tracks in and put them, uploaded it as sounds against the stage and named them. Um, now, all I need to do, if I want some... Um, if I want to add some sound, when I receive... It's going to be a new message. Let's have a new message and call it play music. Uh, that way, you can take that concept. If you just like follow the tutorial just as is, then you can plug and play into your game and have different things broadcast play music. When I receive play music, sound, there are two types of um, sound blocks. There's play sound until done and start sound. Uh, the difference is that start sound will start and continue running the code that's below, right? Except and the play sound will block on that block, it's like a wave block, and when it's done, it's that. So, well, I mean, you know, if you're waiting for, you know, you want to say, you've got a, you've got a little jingle, and you want that to flash during your title screen, and then that to go away, then play sound until done is good, because you can use your sound as a timer. Start sound is, you know, but to us, it really doesn't matter, because uh, we're not going to have anything below. So all the all that bloggers do when I, when I receive play music is um, play music, and then you would have something, in the real world, you'd have something like when the flag is clicked, Broadcast play music. And when it goes, you press play, press the flag, and it's playing SF, the science fiction tune. Okay, good. That's very, very basic and not in a good way because you can't stop the music, you can't change the volume. That, that has the potential to be really, really irritating, and this might turn players away from your game instead of actually getting them in. So, um, first thing we're going to do is allow us to stop the music. So because it's the stage, we can't really detect clicks. Um, well, we can detect clicks, but just like click on the whole stage and it's kind of problematic because you may be doing the trauma poses. So we need, we need some keys. I'm going to use P for play, because why not? Um, oh, sorry, I forgot. The moment that you've, you've taken your, your music, um, you can go straight into the project page. You don't have to share the project to the project page and you can write notes and credits and instructions as you go along. So I'm going to start writing controls, and I'm going to start writing credits. 
music credits. And I'm just going to link like the whole thing to bensound.com because I got them on that place and that's probably enough for a credit. You know, I'm not going to list all of the, the pieces. And control SP will be play music. Get back inside. So when P is play, we, get, we because we already have a message, we can just broadcast the message, broadcast play music. And what, what we're also going to do is when the um, when S for stop is play, we are going to stop all sounds. Now, what's something to bear in mind? About stop, so clear sound effect is to clear the effect applied to the sound. So you get pan, the stereo balance, and the pitch. Um, stop all sounds will stop all sounds run on this prize. So that's why it's important that this only affects that. So conceivably your stage will not be playing anything but the music so that's fine because it will stop all sounds and all of the sounds of the stage will be just the music let me just real quick go back to the project page so s is stop Oops, that's this. play stop that's good it's inside run it so we start play the music i press s it stops i press play it starts playing again if i wanted to start back from the beginning i press p again so yeah, so that's simple, and that allows me to continue running my game. If I'm, you know, I don't want the music, I can just press a key and get it to go away. That's good, but it could be better, right? We can have add volume control. Um, so for this, again, we're going to need a pair of keys. So I'm going to drive it of the keys um, eight and no, sorry, nine and zero, right? Because they're right next plus and minus. I can't bind to plus and minus, but I can bind to nine and zero. So we can have nine. Duplicate this. We're going to have zero. And the good news is each sprite and the stage, just like they, they each get their own sounds and their own costumes, and they keep track of costume changes and backdrop changes in looks, and you can use the backdrop number as a variable. Similarly, in sound, you have the volume as a variable. Uh, so let's click that to see what the, the value is. Unfortunately, you can't, you can have normal or large, but you cannot have it as a slider, which would actually be ideal. But hey, you know, can't have everything. So um, we're going to change the volume by minus 10 when we press 9. So 9 is the one on the left, so we're going to decrease on the left. And when it's 0, we're going to change by 10. The volume only goes from 0 to 100. It's in percentage, right? So press play. Music is playing. Decrease the volume. Cut it completely. Start increasing it again. And it stops up at 100. So you get like 10, 10 degrees of, of freedom. But you, you need to bind an additional two keys. So immediately let's go back to my project page. Um, we're going to put 9 is volume, decrease volume. And 0 is vol plus, increase the volume. Go back inside. So yeah, that looks, that's, let's, let's put that in order. So this is, this is just for demo. I mean, you might have other things that play music, so let's disregard that. But when we see play music, we play. When the P key is pressed, in fact, I could probably remove that because now I've, I've got the key to play and start the music. That didn't work, did it? Oh no, it's because my volume is my volume is all the way to zero, so it did work. Um, yeah, brilliant. So when the pre P play music, when I receive play music, play the sound. Uh, S to stop, which I just clicked and decrease the volume, increase the volume. Actually, I could probably group them like this. We get play. Cool. But what if you want more than one piece of music? After all, I loaded, you may have noticed I've loaded a whole bunch of stuff there and also I've given them name. What's the deal with that? Well, now we're getting to the advanced bit. All right. Now we are going to have a playlist yeah, so I'm going to go to variables and make a list, call the list music. Um, and then in that list, I'm going to have my tracks as they are named. So just click the plus button, you create them by him. I got SF for science fiction, sci-fi. I got Funk House, it's FH, CR was creepy, and what's the other one? Evo? EV, yeah, EV, fair enough. Um, EV. That's fine. I'm also going to need a variable. Um, can I? Yeah, I'm going to rename that variable my variable. I don't need my variables are my variable. All variables are my variables, aren't they? Because it's my game. So there. And I'm going to call it track number. 
or track hash, which is the cipher number or num. I mean, that's actually that's that's bad. That's yeah. Let's not let's not give you bad style habits of using special characters in variable names, which you shouldn't. So let's have track underscore num, because that's much more like real programming. Um, as it were. I'm just going to make that display, but of course we want that. All the volume and stuff, that's just to show, but because that's a demo, um, probably like how to add music. Um, so we just got a game called Music that sounds much more exciting than it really is. Um, all right, so we now have our playlist, and what I'm going to do is instead of playing the sound SF, I am going to play item of music and item track number of music. So that means I'm going to need something that hangs off the, again, hangs on the green flag to initialize it. So I'm going to say that when I want to start on SF when the green flag is click, so we are going to set track number to, now all programming language will, will, will have their list you know, order and number start at zero, but Scratch, to try and be user-friendly, starts at one, which actually throws off a whole bunch of the maths I'm used to. So, um, anyway, we're setting the track number to one, then we are going to bind another pair of keys, uh, and we're going to use seven and eight, right, because they're right next to it. Uh, let's duplicate that. More on this. So I'm going to go 7 is to the left, 8 is to the right, so I am going to say um, 7 is to the left to the previous track, 8, next track, go back inside. Oh, did I share it? I didn't mean to share that. Huh. Um, you can only unshare from my stuff, it doesn't really matter, because it will end up being shared. When 7 is key is pressed, I'm going to want to decrease the track number, so we are going to change track number by minus 1 when it's when it's 7 is pressed, and 1 when 8 is pressed. I'm going to want to put some little ifs and stuff. I was using some arithmetic, but because of the um, starting at 0, starting at 1, which in the software industry, this is known as the Obi Wan error or Kenobi error. After Obi Wan Kenobi, the Star Wars character, because it's off by one, Obi Wan or by one. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're changing the track number by minus one. However, uh, if no, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna... There's a much more elegant way of doing it. I'm going to use a minimum. I do have a minimum, right? Oh, huh, yeah. No. I don't have a minimum. Okay, so I'm going to do it with an if. That's a, that's a shame. I'll show you how to calculate a minimum, but you use an if to calculate a minimum. So anyway, if um, the... So if we've reached zero, we're going to want it to be one. So if the track number is equal to zero, then we are going to set track number to zero. Because we don't want it to go below... Uh, no, set track number to one, my bad. Right, because we've gone under our minimum, so we were at one that was the first track, we try to get to the previous track that decreases, it sets it to zero the moment but right after we check, right? And we check if it is zero, set it back to one. So that, that ensures we never leave the um, we never leave the kind of list by the bottom and to do it by the top. If it's five, so again you're not you're not testing on four and one, you're testing on the outer bounds on zero and five, because it's after the change. If it's five, we're going to set it to four, and that ensures that you don't go above the boundaries. Um, I've done the yes, I have done the. Um, no, let's let's go back in and and make it play when we start the game because we might as well. Oop. Start the game. Sci-fi starts. 20 volume. You could also conceivably initialize the volume so that like in the you know when the green flag is clicked set your volume to a set value, but that doesn't really, doesn't really matter. So we play that track and then press 8, it didn't work. I press 7, it didn't work. 
<laughs> All right, so let's see why. Press S to stop. Okay, when. Um, Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I forgot the, the more important thing. So we, we've all we've done is change the track number, and once we get our track number right, and we're making sure we're not out of the bound, we're going to broadcast play music. So outside of the if, right at the very bottom. See, sometimes it's like because you got it wrong in the first place that you make the mistake, and then you will remember it forever. The right way to do it. So if I press the green flag, we're starting to play. I can still change my volume. Ah, now here's an interesting thing. I've got a bunch of them playing together, so what I want now, and I knew that because I actually did like a, an early version of the video this morning, so it's shameful I didn't remember, but anyway, you just want to make sure you stop all the sounds before starting broadcasting play. Um, and similarly, when broadcast play music, oh, well, no, no, sorry, sorry, why am I doing this? This is, this is silly. What we're going to do is make sure we can only play one track at a time, and in order to do that, because the beauty of this system, right, is that it only has one play block. So you don't have to keep track of, oh, where the sound coming from, you only have to keep track of what broadcasts the message that fires this block. So what we need to do, if we want to make sure, this is not like sound effects where we want to get kind of several things playing at the same time, it's a music track, so we just want to put a stop all sounds before play sound. And now we're back, we're back in business. So I'm playing SF, press 8, track number becomes 2 right here, yeah. Uh, we're playing the Funky House theme here. Press 8 again. Oops. Yeah, not, not here. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. Um, so this will this will only work. My boundary check means that the the beauty of this, like this is the full project, or certainly this is the full features. But then there's like a second video on how to do that, not on the stage but on the sprite, which I think is better for reason that will explain the second video. Anyway, but like for the stage, that's about it. What you need to remember is like you need to name your sounds. Uh, if you're using the playlist thing, right? You don't have to worry too much if you want that. But um, no, wait, I've not, sorry, like, yeah, the, I've got an extra little bit, because sometimes, yeah, sometimes you may not want the, the player to be able to control the music playing. You may want to use creepy music during the creepy part, and, you know, uh, funky house during the chase part, or whatever, so it's like, you're using it as a narrative tool. Um, we're almost at 20 minutes, I need to kind of wrap this up. Still, remember, you'll name your sound, and make sure you've got the same, this, the names of your sound are in your music playlist. Um... Because and then your code doesn't need to worry at all about at all about the names of your sound and your tracks because you're just managing this through here, which is so much easier because then you can easily add tracks and whatnot. And and let's say you know if I wanna, let's say I don't like the evolution, I think it's too intense. I just remove it and it's not available. I don't have to go back to the backdrops, you know, to the sorry to the sounds, right? Uh, let me add it add it again though. Now here, what I've done will work, but only for a music of length 4, because the bottom is always going to be, you know, starts at 1, therefore when I decrease it, it's going to become 0, and I test on 0, and and then it set it, set it back to 1 to ensure that we stay, we never kind of go too low, that's fine. But to check that we never go too high, we the 5 and the 4 here are, are dependent on the size of this list. So to make it more generic, if you want to import it, uh, we, we we are going to take the length of music that's viable, yeah, and we are going to add one to get our so track number to length of music, that's fine, right? Because uh, that's four, and then in the case of five, we're going to want length length of music plus one. So can we just duplicate that? Yeah, boom, plus one. And now let me just test my code. So let you know what I do. A change, I test it. Well, in, you know, if I'm showing you, maybe I may do two or three changes, but seven, we never go before SF, that's fine. Funky house, creepy. And then evolution at the end of the playlist. But if I press eight again, it, we're at the end. So it, gets, it doesn't go above four, but if I start adding a track, so let's add like a... I'm gonna I'm gonna do just like that. Okay. Dun, 
Alright, that's my piece of music. It's beauty. I'm gonna trim it, I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna call it um, WB because it's my initials and put that number five at WB just to show you it's not really about the track, right? But now we're back in here. So it's it's put me back at, at SF because we remember remember we initialize we start track number one because that's just because we don't want it to save. If you remove that initialization, it will just remember where you were. That's that's also if you want to do it like a music player, that's a good way to do it. So I'm going up, going up. Evolution, but now yeah, here's my track. Back to evolution, back to WB. So it's cool, like you just just to now, once you get the system in place, you can add and remove tracks really easily as long as you name it the same way. Um, remember also to give meaningful names to your things. So in that case, we have nothing to name uh, except, of course, the sounds. But all and document as you go along. If you start putting things like the controls, and I like it's no big deal having a lot of keys bound if the controls are on display. But uh, it's really easy to kind of use keys. So I'm just going to like you know make make it use this for a, a power up and this for health and whatever, and forget to actually give the player the instructions. And similarly, remember to put the credit. So you can always like you know flip back and forth between the outside project page and the inside page with those buttons. I encourage you to do it because then that way it's written and you don't have to you don't have to worry and remember it because uh, that's a good thing. I'll uh, see you very soon on how to do it even better using a sprite. Thanks for watching.